This is one of my absolute favourite topics and this video Dr Edwards is going to be showing you all the amazing things we can do with an optical microscope. It is important that you are familiar with the different parts of an optical microscope. Hopefully you've used one of these in the lab at school or seen somebody use one. We have eyepiece, the base, this is going to be the light source down here. This could be a mirror or it could be a lamp if it's an electrical microscope. This large wheel here is your coarse focus and the smaller one is your fine focus. There are some objective lenses that come here and this bit is a wheel which you can turn to switch between the different objective lenses. This is your stage and you'll place your slide in here so that you can view it under the microscope, view it through the eyepieces. The slide is held in with this clip here which you can move in and out, in and out, to put the slide in place and keep it there. Optical microscopes are going to use a convex glass lens. It has a pair of lenses. It has the eyepiece and then it has the objective lenses. These will generally be four times, 10 times, 40 times, maybe a hundred times. You will need a light source coming from below so that you can actually visualize things. Otherwise it is going to be very, very hard to see anything. An important thing to note about optical microscopes is that resolution is different to magnification. Resolution is the ability to differentiate between two spots to work out there's two things there instead of one thing. In a light microscope, the resolution is roughly 0.2 micrometers. Anything closer than 0.2 micrometers apart will appear to be a single object under an optical microscope. The higher the resolution a microscope has, it will give the more precise image. Using optical microscopes. So we need to make sure that we're using the correct language and we also need to make sure that we can explain how to use a microscope to observe objects. So the way we increase the magnification is to turn the objective lens to a higher power. And when we talk about increasing the magnification, what we mean is in order to make the image that we're gonna see through our microscope appear larger. The focus wheels are used to make the image appear less blurry so to bring it into focus. Due to their lower resolution and magnification, light microscopes can only show certain organelles. Really, we're only able to see mitochondria just about, and nuclei, and anything smaller than that cannot be seen. So no ribosomes and none of the other structures we've talked about already. Living cells and tissues can be viewed, so things that are alive and maybe moving around or that are functioning, but they're often transparent. So most cells, like you can see the majority of the cells in this leaf image here, are transparent. However, there will be cells that contain pigments, like these chloroplasts that you can see inside the guard cells around the stomata here. So pigmented structures, so things like red blood cells, for example, that already have pigment in them, they will be able to see, be seen in colour, but everything else is transparent. So in order to see certain structures, we will need to use stains. Different stains will bind to different materials. They could be like the cell walls or DNA, for example. Here we can see some starch grains that have been stained with iodine, which will turn them blue-black and so that we can see them. All tissue samples that you use for a light microscope must be very thin so that we can see the light through them. The light needs to pass through from underneath and up through the objective lenses so that we can view the structures. There are two pieces of equipment we can use to actually measure structures in a microscope. 
the slide graticule, which is um, a lined ruler on a microscope slide that you place on the stage of the microscope, and the eyepiece ruler, which is actually a ruler imprinted on the lens that is in the eyepiece. The slide graticule is a calibrated measurement in the ruler. So it shows known measurements, including millimeters and micrometers, and it's actually been measured out on this slide. The eyepiece ruler is just a series of lines that has been scratched into or laid onto the eyepiece lens. So that allows you to lay this over structures you can see on the microscope, and then you can measure it as a sense of scale. So you can use this to kind of count as a scale some the number of lines that the length of an object is. And we call these lines eyepiece units or EPU for short. So let's look at an example to see how we can use this eyepiece ruler and the slide graticule to measure something under the microscope. So here's that same image we saw earlier about the stomata on the underside of a leaf. So to find the length of the stomata, I'm going to use my eyepiece ruler, which you can see I've kind of aligned, I've twisted the eyepiece lens so it's kind of a straight line of these eyepiece units, and I've sort of laid it slightly over the top of my stomata. So I'm going to count the number of lines that make up the length, or the number of eyepiece units that make up the length of this stomata. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's seven eyepiece units. Now what I'll have done is I'll have taken away my microscope slide that had the stomata tissue, the leaf tissue on it, replaced it with my graticle slide, laid my eyepiece ruler, make sure they line up in a straight line over the ruler that's on the slide graticule, and I now need to see how many eyepiece units is the equivalent of what length on my slide graticule. So here we can see my seven eyepiece units is the equivalent of one millimetre. So the thing to remember with this is obviously that the size of the stomata is not going to change, but you can obviously view it at different magnifications. So if we increase the magnifications, I'm looking at exactly the same thing, but this time I'm using a times 20 objective instead of a times 10 objective. So I've effectively doubled the size. So my eyepiece ruler is not going to change. It's fixed, it's in the eyepiece. But what I have done is I'm using a higher power objective lens so my stomata appears larger. So I'm going to measure it at 20 magnification as well just to prove to you that it's the same size. The stomata has not changed size. So this time, and this makes sense because I've doubled my size of my stomata, it's now 14 eyepiece units long. When I now need to calibrate my eyepiece ruler, I'm going to need to look at my slide graticule using the same objective lens. So this time I'm looking at my slide graticule with my times 20 magnification. So my slide graticule also appears double the size. So because I looked at my stomata using times 20, I need to look at my graticule slide also through the same objective lens that I was looking at it at to measure the size. So this time, my eyepiece units, my 14 eyepiece units, still line up with one millimeter. And that makes sense, because like we said, the stomata hasn't changed size at all. So here, 14 eyepiece units still measures one millimeter at times 20 magnification. The only thing really to remember for this is that you use your eyepiece ruler to measure the length in eyepiece units or lines on your eyepiece ruler, or width or whatever you need to do and then you calibrate it using your slide graticule at the same magnification. We can use this to then work out and calibrate our eyepiece ruler so we know now that if one millimeter is the equivalent of seven eyepiece units each of these little lines is then 0.14 millimeters. So that means that also now I've done that once I can now go away and measure multiple stomata using my eyepiece units and just convert that way. So if it's 10 eyepiece units, it will be 1.4 millimeters and so on. So you just need to make sure you can sort of figure out and explain how you would use your eyepiece graticle to measure it. How would you convert your eyepiece units into actual measurements using the slide graticle? Maybe how you could actually calculate what one eyepiece unit was and then use that multiple times but just remembering that you need to lay your ruler or your eyepiece unit 
unit ruler on top of your slide graphical at the same magnification as what you were using it at. And obviously, if you need to get the average length of a stomata, for example, you'd have to do this multiple times with multiple different stomata that you could see in your field of view and then calculate an average. When you have an image under the microscope, you then need to be able to determine the size, the actual real size of that image. And for that, we need to use magnification calculations. The equation that you need to be able to remember is that magnification is the size of the image divided by the actual size of the image. Whenever you get a magnification calculation, the very first thing you should do is to highlight all of the numbers in the text and then convert them so they are the same scale. So you convert microns, uh, micrometers to nanometers, so they're all in the same scale, so you do not get confused. If there is an eyepiece graphical in the question, or you've been using one in the lab, then you can use that to measure the size of the image that you are seeing down the microscope. This eyepiece graphical will need to be calibrated for each individual lens magnification that you are using. There are a couple of ways we can use this calculation to actually calculate various things like image size, actual size, or magnification. Let's do an example with this image where we're going to calculate magnification using the scale bar, which might be something you've not come across in GCSE. We're still going to use magnification equals image over actual size, but this time we're just going to use our scale bar. So we do not need to measure anything on the diagram other than the scale bar. So we're going to measure the length of the scale bar with our ruler, and then we need to divide that by the actual size of the scale bar, which it tells us on the top. So on the diagram, you can see it says 100 micrometers. Obviously, if you measure this with a ruler, it's not 100 micrometers, so that's the actual size. That's what this scale bar represents at this magnification. So I then measured that line with my ruler and it came out as 25 millimeters. Always make sure we're using millimeters and not centimeters when we measure and then we won't get confused. So I need both of my units to be the same to do my division. So I'm going to times my 25 by 1,000 to make it 25,000 micrometers. I've converted it. And then we can do the division. So 25,000 micrometers divided by 100. So my magnification is 250 times. So let's look at a different example. This time would be calculating actual size. And so once we've calculated the magnification using the scale bar, we can now calculate the actual size of, say, the diameter of the central vein of this image that we can see here. So, actual size still equals image size over magnification. We've got the magnification from our scale bar, so our magnification is 250 times, and we need to do the image size. So this time we will need to use our ruler to measure the diameter of that central vein. So I've measured it and it's 20 millimeters. Again, make sure we're always using millimetres. So this time we're doing 20 millimetres divided by 250. Magnification doesn't have any units, so we don't need to think about converting here, but it's going to give me 0 0.08 millimetres. You may find the question might ask you to convert to micrometres, so we just do our usual, so we times by 1,000, and that's going to get us 80 micrometres. So that's the actual size of the diameter of that central vein. So this is kind of like a multi-step calculation where you would use the scale bar to calculate the magnification of the image, and then they might ask you to calculate the actual size of something in the image. One, you both need to use your ruler for both, but in one, you're not measuring anything on the actual image, you're just measuring the scale bar. And then for the second one, you need to measure something in the actual image it's asking you for. This is obviously not always the case, but these are kind of the sort of the longest or com most complicated version of this question they could ask you often they can give you magnification and you don't have to work it out. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches. <laughs>